You're welcome to the Week in Review, where we bring you key developments that occurred at the global African and Nigerian economic space. We begin with the story that the U.S. government first rolled out forgivable loans to small businesses in early April under the Paycheck Protection Program. Loan officers at Bank of the West in Grapevine, Texas, worked nights and weekends to process a tsunami of applications. But since those first few frantic weeks, the man has just dried up, said bank president Cindy Blankenship. On May 15, the bank stopped taking applications for the PPP loans. Nationally, the program remains active, but data from the Small Business Administration shows net weekly PPP lending has actually been negative since mid-May, as fewer firms applied for loans and some borrowers returned funds. All told, the SBS says it had approved $512.2 billion in PPP loans as of May 21st. That's nearly $150 billion less than $660 billion allocated to the program which was designed to keep Americans on company payrolls and off unemployment assistance. Many of Bank of the West PPP borrowers haven't touched the PPP loan deposits, which total $87 million. Blankenship says, partly because they are confused about the terms. According to him, there is a mixture of uncertainty and anxiety and fear and the uncontrollable factor about employment and rehiring. The money left on borrowed and unspent under the program, a flagship of the Congress $2.9 trillion effort to cushion the economic crush of the coronavirus pandemic represents a lost opportunity. Businesses were supposed to use it to retain workers, but may have been laying them off instead of tapping the money. Some 38.6 million people have filed for unemployment insurance since the crisis began, and the unemployment rate is expected to be near or surpass the 25% record reached in the Great Depression era. American Airlines will cut 30% of its management and support staff in its latest belt tightening move during the prolonged COVID-19 downturn. The company has disclosed. The big US carrier outlined a series of measures to reduce headcount throughout its operations in an email to staff that was released in a securities filing during the week. American Airlines currently has a team of 17,000 people in management and support meaning the actions plan will cut around about 5,100 jobs. The move follows statements from United Airlines, Delta Airlines, and other carriers that have signaled deep job cuts due to sinking air travel demand from coronavirus shutdowns. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has urged fellow leaders to consider providing further support to multilateral institutions like the United Nations and the World Health Organization to speed recovery from the coronavirus crisis. Speaking at a UN-sponsored virtual conference of world leaders, she also said countries should allocate more funding to the International Monetary Fund to help states that come into short-term financial difficulties. Additional IMF measures might also be considered when it becomes necessary to at short notice secure the liquidity of vulnerable states. She said this to an interpreter. Thus, it might be conceivable to consider an increased allocation of special drawing rights of the International Monetary Fund. During the week, the United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, said debt relief must be extended to all developing middle-income countries that request forbearance as they lose access to financial markets amid the coronavirus pandemic. Many developed and middle-income countries are highly vulnerable and already in debt distress or will soon become so due to the global recession. Alleviating crushing debt cannot be limited to the least developed countries, he told a UN meeting on how to handle the pandemic crisis in the course of the week. And now to Nigeria. In the first quarter of 2020, the National Bureau of Statistics released Nigeria's Gross Domestic Product Report, which showed that the economy grew by 1.87% year-on-year in real terms. This performance was recorded against the backdrop of significant global disruptions resulting from the COVID-19 public health crisis, a sharp fall in oil prices, and restricted international trade. The performance recorded in the first quarter of 2020 represented a drop of minus 0.23 percent points compared to first quarter of 2019 and minus 0.68 percent points compared to fourth quarter of 2019. Reflecting the earliest effects of the disruption, particularly on the non-oil economy, quarter-on-quarter -quarter real GDP growth was minus 14.27 percent compared to 5.59 percent recorded in the preceding quarter. In the quarter under review, aggregate GDP stood at 
billion dollars in nominal terms. This performance was higher when compared to the first quarter of 2019, which recorded $31 billion with a nominal growth rate of 12.01% year-on-year. Related to the first quarter of 2019, the nominal growth rate was higher by 0.11% points, but lower than the preceding quarter by minus 0.32% points. For better clarity, the Nigerian economy has been classified broadly into the oil and oil sector. In the oil sector, the first quarter of 2020 experienced an average daily oil production of 2.07 million barrels per day, which was recorded during the period. The production level was higher than the 1.99 million barrels per day recorded in the same quarter of 2019 by 0.08 million barrels per day, and the fourth quarter of 2019 we showed 0.06 million barrels per day. The oil sector recorded a real growth rate of 5.06% year-on-year in first quarter 2020, indicating an increase of 6.51% points relative to the rates recorded in the corresponding quarter of 2019. However, growth decreased by minus 1.30% points when compared to the fourth quarter of 2019, which was 6.36%. Quarter on quarter, the oil sector recorded a growth rate of 11.30% in the first quarter 2020. The oil sector contributed 9.50% to aggregate real GDP in the first quarter of 2020, up from figures recorded in the corresponding period of 2019 and the preceding quarter as the share of the non-oil sector economy declined. The non-oil sector grew by 1.55% in real terms during the reference quarter of first quarter 2020, this was slower by minus 0.93 percent points compared to the rate recorded during the same quarter of 2019 and minus 0.72 percent points slower than the growth rate quarter of 2019. The non-oil sector was driven mainly by information and communications, te telecommunications, financial and insurance, that's the financial institutions, agriculture, that's crop production, mining and querying, crude, petroleum and natural gas, and the construction sectors. In real terms, the non-oil sector contributed 90.50% to the nation's gross domestic product in the first quarter of 2020, less than its share in the first quarter of 2019, which was 90.78%, and the fourth quarter of 2019 recorded as 92.68%. Activities that witnessed weaker performance relative to the first quarter of 2019 include querying, road transport, accommodation and food services, as well as real estate. See from the National Bureau of Statistics during the week, the total value of capital importation into Nigeria stood at $5,854,000,000 in the first quarter of 2020. This represented an increase of 53.97% compared to the fourth quarter of 2019 and minus 31.19% decrease compared to the first quarter of 2019. The largest amount of capital importation by type was received through portfolio investment, which accounted for 73.61% of total capital importation, followed by other investments which accounted for 22.73% of total capital and then foreign direct investment which accounted for 3.66% of total capital imported in first quarter 2020. By sector, capital importation by banking dominated the first quarter of 2020 reaching $2 billion million of the total capital importation in first quarter 2020. The United Kingdom emerged as the top source of capital investment in Nigeria in first quarter 2020 with $2,908,000,000. dollars. This accounted for 49.68% of the total capital inflow in the first quarter of 2020. By destination of investment, Lagos State emerged as the top destination of capital investment in Nigeria in first quarter 2019 with $5,135,000,000, which also accounted for 87.72% of total capital inflow in first quarter 2020. In terms of banking, Standard Chartered Bank Nigeria Limited emerged as the top capital flight investment company in Nigeria in first quarter 2020 with $1,665,000,000. dollars. This accounted for 28.30% of the total capital inflow in first quarter 2020. The Central Bank of Nigeria during the week had its Monetary Policy Committee meeting. This was on Thursday. May 28, 2020. The committee members, which were faced with the hard choices of reducing or leaving policy parameters unchanged, unanimously elected to reduce the benchmark interest rate by 100 basis points. At the end of the meeting, the committee reached the following key decisions. Reducing the monetary policy rate to 12.5% from 13.5%. 
retaining their symmetrical corridor around the emperor at plus 200 and minus 500 basis points, retaining the cash reserve ratio at 27.5% and retaining liquidity ratio at 30%. As part of the continued effort to mitigate the impact of the coronavirus on households, businesses, and regulated institutions, the Central Bank of Nigeria had reduced interest rates on its facilities through participation of other financial institutions from 9% to 5% per annum for one year effective from March 1, 2020. The bank in a circular recently signed by the Director of Financial Policy and Regulating Department, Mr. Kevin Amogo, issued on Wednesday, May 27, 2020, during the week in Abuja, announced that the Central Bank of Nigeria intervention facilities obtained through participating OFIs, microfinance banks, primary mortgage banks, and institutions, among others, will be given a further one-year moratorium on all principal repayments, also effective March 1, 2020. According to the circular, OFIs have equally been granted leave to consider temporary and time-limited restructuring of the tenor and loans terms for households and businesses affected by COVID-19, subject to the recently issued guidelines for restructuring affected credit facilities in the OFI subsector. Expatiating on the decision of the bank, the Director of Corporate Communications, Mr. Isaac Okorafor, said the management approved for the restructuring of credit facilities in the OFI subsector, which is in line with the bank's desire to alleviate momentary strain on households, businesses and regulated institutions triggered by the lockdown due to COVID-19. He explained that the CVM will continue to monitor developments and implement appropriate measures to safeguard financial stability and support stakeholders impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. And that will be all for this edition of the Week in Review. You can visit our website www.proshengine.com to get more updates from our news stories and videos. Brochure and Just Leading Financial Information Hub this period has for you the Corona Central Watch where you can get all your data and analysis from the world, national to state tracker. Log on to www.proshengine.com slash COVID-19 to get all the updates you need. You can also follow our social media platforms showing on the screen for further updates on our market reports. Till we come your way again, thank you for watching. Have a nice day and stay safe.